what can you do with a spoon? Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Feel that icy wind pierce your skin. You're wearing threadbare clothing in the dead of winter. The last meal you had was two days ago. A moldy piece of bread and a spoonful of watered-down vegetable soup. You're told to dig. You feel the dirt embedded in your fingernails. Your hands begin to cramp, unable to pry your fingers from the wooden shovel. But you keep digging, for you know your life depends on it. But you start to wonder, what could be the purpose for digging such a large pit? A cold chill runs down your spine as you come across the only possible explanation. You're digging a grave, your own grave. You watch the faces of your peers as they come to the same realization. You start to panic. You feel your will to live slip away. The faint memories of your fifth birthday party, of learning to ride a bike, slipping through the cracks of your filthy fingers. No, this won't be the end. This can't be the end. So you and your peers secretly gather in the dead of night and decide to escape. But with what? Your head pounds with the thought of the family heirlooms and precious belongings viciously stolen by the Nazis that could help you escape. All you have are a few useless, rusty spoons. But knowing it's your only gate to freedom, you get down on your trembling knees and begin to dig with that rust-covered, meaningless spoon. Only this time, you aren't digging your grave. You're digging to survive. Open your eyes. There are 80 of you standing here. There were 80 people with spoons. 80 people who dug for their lives. 12 survived the massacre. How did they survive? Look at your spoon. A minute ago, when we posed the question, what can you do with a spoon? Most of you probably would have answered something obvious, like eating soup. Clearly, spoons are not something we give much thought to. They are a mundane, everyday object of our lives. However, when these people were given the same question, they answered something entirely different. They saw opportunity. They saw a tool for survival. They saw light in darkness and life in almost certain death. The fact that a spoon, a seemingly mundane object, has so many uses, such as digging and eating, is apropos that the, de that the Hebrew word um, for spoon also has many definitions. The Hebrew word for spoon is kaf. However, kaf also translates to the word palm. The palm of your hand represents doing, and these people did. They held spoons in their hand and took action to save their lives. The word kaf also means handle. A handle allows you to open and close a door. Without it, the room would, rem would remain closed off. They needed the spoon to dig the tunnels and open up an escape route. The, a spoon portrays both the potential such a mundane item holds and also the initiative these three souls took in order to save their lives. As it says in Tehillim, Yakia Kapecha, Kito Balashrafa, Betov Lach. When you eat the labor of your hands, it is well, you are praiseworthy and it is well with you. A spoon represents action. It, um, it represents uh, the willingness to accept a death, a death sentence and uh, I'm willing to accept the death sentence without first using your own two hands. A spoon, a cough, is an example of taking an object and extracting different meanings from it. You can learn a lot from an object by its use and its name. If you take a look at the small things in life, you have the ability to extract meaning from them. To the naive, innocent child, a blanket is a cape, providing them the power to save the world from heinous crimes. Cardboard boxes are the machines 
that transport them to far off new dimensions. Numbers are for math homework and telling time and counting chocolate chips they get after dinner. Spoons are for funny reflections, magic wands, and balancing on their noses. To the 40-year-old lawyer, a blank of it provides a restful sleep after a 12-hour workday. Cardboard boxes are for packing her belongings, moving to her new home, a new start for her family. Numbers are for receipts and taxes and credit card bills. Spoons are for eating chicken soup on Shabbat, a time to relax and enjoy a hot meal. To a survivor, a blanket provides warmth she once thought she would never again feel. Cardboard boxes in the attic contain pictures from the war that will never again be looked at. The memories are all too painful. Numbers are simply the tattoo on her arm. Permanent reminders of the pain, the absence of humanity that sounds shivers down her spine. And a spoon, a spoon is a tool, a shovel, a tunnel. A spoon is an escape, a spoon is freedom. A spoon is a reason for existence today. Take a deep breath. Take a look around you. Feel the gloves on your hands. Feel the bag over your shoulders. Feel the hat on your head. These are the things in life that we depend on, that we expect. Think about what a privilege, what a gift it is to have these things. These things in our lives have a purpose, a singular purpose. We limit gloves to warming our hands, bags to holding our things, and hats to covering our heads. The victims of the Ponar atrocity didn't know such limits. They couldn't afford to. We ask you to look at your surroundings and to appreciate the seemingly small things in life.